Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and another tutorial. Today, I'm happy to introduce you to the So Yours Betsy Bowler Bag. This bag is so much fun to make and it's actually a really quick sew. Like I think um, if I wasn't filming a tutorial, it would have taken me about four or four or five hours maybe to make this bag. Um, it comes together really, really quick and it is super satisfying to make. Um, let me show you some of the features of this bag. So you can see in the front here, um, you have a choice where you could do the flap closure as a turn lock like I have, or you could use a magnetic snap. So it has that pocket in the front there. It has another slip pocket in the back that's secured with a magnetic snap. Look at that zipper and this gusset. It's gorgeous. Um, it is a binding finish. Do not be scared of a binding finish. We have a zipper pocket on one side. You can't even see the binding really in there. Um, yes, so it is a binding finish. I walk you through every step of the binding in this video. Um, the binding I chose to do was a double fold bias tape. That is my chosen uh, binding um, for all of my bags. If you are binding this with waterproof canvas, canvas, Melissa of So Yours, who wrote this pattern, in her tutorial shows you how to do it with waterproof canvas because it's slightly different when it comes to binding when you're doing it that way. Um, what did I use in this bag? This beautiful vinyl is the is bonded leather from Galaxy Customs. Um, this stuff is amazing, and I know it's limited supply on her website. I can't remember what this color is, um, but I swear, like look at that it's gorgeous um my i used us uh, for interfacing um all my cotton pieces i've used eb fuse light from mli bags um i used uh pretty and pink so foam from galaxy customs as my main stabilizer i used decaville heavy in the bottom and it um deck of a light in the flap, as well as a few scraps of Peltex just to secure in behind turn locks and that sort of thing. Um, the lining fabric, I don't remember what it's called. It was in my stash. Of course, I, I've used it before and there's no salvages, but I did get it at Fabricland. I do remember that. All my zippers and zipper pulls are from Blue Cala and the rest of my hardware is all from Emmeline Bags. What else, what else do I need to say about this bag? I really think that is it. So without further ado, let's get to making this bag. Right, so what you're gonna need are some rivets, some binding, some number five zipper tape, a turn lock, some purse feet, a slider, two rectangular rings, two or three zipper pulls, and your magnetic snap, as well as your nameplate. Okay, so I am going to be using Pretty in Pink Sew-In Foam as my main stabilizer. I have my overlay for my zipper pocket, my connector piece, my crossbody strap, my front exterior top, my front exterior bottom, my back an exterior or my back panel and my two lining panels two exterior zipper panels and two lining zipper panels my gusset piece my lining piece as well as my exterior piece and I have also put decaville heavy into the bottom here outside of the seam allowances my two slip pocket pieces so two exterior pieces and two lining pieces Again, all my lining is backed with EB Fuse Light. My flap closure, and I have Decaville Light on the back of the exterior piece. And my zipper pocket lining piece. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make my adjustable crossbody strap. That class is down in the description below if you need it. Okay, so let's make our connector. So I've drawn a center line down the middle of my connector piece, and I'm folding my long edges down into the center. And then I'm going to take this to the machine and I'm going to top stitch down each of those folded edges with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now I'm going to take it, fold it in half and cut it into two pieces. I'm going to take my rectangular rings and a small piece of double sided tape at the bottom of my connectors to hold them in place. 
and bring those connectors wrong sides together like so and then you can set those aside for later. Okay, so for our flap closure, so on my exterior piece, you'll see I have my Decaville Heavy um, about three quarters of an inch down from the top, which is what we like. Um, I'm gonna take my lining piece and I'm gonna put these two pieces right sides together and clip them together. And then we're gonna go ahead and stitch this with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so I am just going to add a small piece of scrap Peltex just because I want my turn lock to be nice and snug on this part. So I'm going to find the center of my raw end side or the top straight edge of my flap. I'm going to double check that this is indeed center. Now this part is not in the pattern. I just like to have a little bit extra um, something behind the female end of my um, turn lock to be able to grab onto it better so it's not loose. Okay so I'm going to draw a center line down and from our stitch line I am going to measure about half an inch up and make another line from the stitch line. Now this is just for my turn lock I find that it needs just that little bit extra because it's a little bit deep. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fuse this Peltex onto that line. Okay, now I'm gonna take my pinking shears and um, cut around the curve. This is gonna make it so it turns nicely and we can get a nice round um, press seam where the curve is. And then turn it right side out. Press out those seams nice. And I like to use some clips just to hold that seam together and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to top stitch all the way around the seam and baste the top opening shut. Okay so that is done and now it's time to place the female side of our turn lock. So again I'm going to mark my center line and I'm going to make sure I am center. And then I'm going to measure up one inch from the center curve part. And I'm going to put my turn lock there, making sure that center line is in the center of this. I'm going to draw where I'm going to be punching out. Okay, so this is what I like to use for my punches. I just got these off of Amazon. I think if you look up leather punches, it'll come up. And this one is perfect. This punch is perfect for my Emmeline locks. This is what I use all the time. So I'm making sure this is nice and center over that mark we just did. And I'm going to bang it with my mallet. And you can see, not quite there. I'm going to bang a little more. And it should just pop through like that and give you your perfect hole. Then I'm going to take my um, my hole punch here and where we mark those screw holes, I'm going to just make holes for that. Now when you take your right side of your uh, female part of the lock, you should be able to have all the fabric around the part that kind of sticks up and have the screw holes visible. On the cotton side, I like to take a little fray check just to make sure that these are not going to fray away for me. Again, I like to use my awl just to make sure it's all around where it's not going to be underneath or through our uh, turn lock when we go to screw it in. So I also like to use a little bit of thread locker. You can get this at any uh, 
home department store type thing for my screws to make sure they're going to be nice and tight in there. Okay, and then I'm going to take my back plate, center it over the screw holes and screw my screws in. So with that thread locker, once these screws are in, they are not going to come out. That is our flap complete. Okay, so now we're going to take our exterior front bottom piece. We're going to find the center at the top of the straight edge. Again, I like to double check that it's center with my ruler. Okay, and then we are going to take our flat piece right side up as well as our bottom piece right side up and we are going to clip this to the top centered. And take your exterior front exterior top piece place it right sides together over top of that and add it into the clips. Then we're going to sew across here. Okay, and then we want to press that seam towards the bottom panel. So I am going to use a little double-sided tape as I cannot press this. If you do not use double-sided tape, just do a really good finger press. Or if you're using cotton, you can definitely take this to the iron. So make sure that seam is pointing down and then go ahead and top stitch through the bottom panel. Okay, so now we're going to work on our slip pockets. So we're going to take our exteriors and our lining pieces, put them right sides together. And then sew across here with a quarter of an inch seam allowance for both. And then we're going to want to press these two pieces wrong sides together. Again, I'm going to use double sided tape to do this. You can do this with an iron if you're not using vinyl or you can finger press. Then we're going to go ahead and top stitch that with a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. And then repeat again with the other slip pocket. Okay, so now we're going to take the front panel here. I'm going to find the center of my bottom and the center of my top. This probably would have been a lot easier to do before connecting the flap, but hey, we do what we can. Again, I'm just double checking that my marks are center. 
Then we're going to take one of the slip pockets, find the bottom center of this, and then center it onto our front panel, holding it together temporarily here with some clips. We just want this to be in place because we are going to mark the placement of the male part of our turn lock here momentarily. Okay, so then we're going to fold the flap down the way it's going to go. And in the center of the female part of our lock, I'm just going to take my Tandy leather pen and make a uh, circle. It should be about one and five eighths of an inch down from our top of our slip pocket. Then we're going to remove the slip pocket. I'm going to mark where I'm going to be cutting my prong holes or prong slits. Then you're going to flip the lining side out of the way because we do not want to cut through that. I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and cut through those slits and install the male part of my turn lock, backing it with a piece of Peltex as well just to give it a little extra stability as this part is going to be opening and closing quite a bit. So the Peltex over the prongs and then the back plate. And then I also like to take a piece of duct tape or Gorilla tape to put over the prongs just to ensure that they will not rub through the lining with use. All right, and then go ahead and recenter that pocket onto the front panel. and go ahead and base that on. Okay, so now we're gonna work on the back panel. So again, we're gonna find our centers of the, our back panel, just like we did with the front panel. And on this panel, we are going to be installing the female side of the magnetic snap. We do want to make sure that we are definitely center so our snap pieces will match up once they are installed. Okay, and then we are going to measure down as per the pattern, make a dot where we are going to install that snap. And we're going to take our back slip pocket piece, find our center, and on the lining side of it, we are going to install our, our male side of our snap one inch down from the top folded edge, nice and center. Okay, so you're going to flip the exterior out of the way and install the male side here and the female side there. Again, I have backed these with a small scrap of Decaville Heavy and going to back them with a piece of Gorilla Tape as well. Put the snap in place and go ahead and clip this together and baste it all in place. Okay, so now I'm going to install my purse feet. Again, if you need a class on how to install purse feet, you can go ahead and check out the class down in the description for this. I'm just going to take my bottom stabilizer piece and use my punch outs there for uh, guidance of where I'm going to put my um, purse feet. So now I'm going to take all of my exterior pieces and back them with foam. Now you can see here, uh, because I didn't use a fusible foam, I went right to the edges. So I want to reduce some of that bulk. So I kind of cut my foam on those edges once it's basted on at a 
kind of a 45 degree angle, I guess. And as you can see, it reduces a lot of bulk in the seam there when using foam. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that through um, all of my exterior pieces here. Okay, so now it's time to work on the zip panel. So I like to, when I cut these out, I made sure on the back to mark my straight edge because one edge of it's curved and one is straight. It is the straight edge that we want to attach to the zipper. So I'm taking my lining piece and my zipper both right side up with some double sided tape. Again, you can use clips, um, sticking them together and then taking my exterior piece, putting it right sides together with the zipper. And my zipper's a little bit long, that's okay. We will trim that up later. And then we're gonna go across here with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now I've put my zipper foot on to ensure that I get a nice and straight zipper. We could get a little bit closer to the zipper this way. Make sure your needle is down if you need to move your zipper pulls out of the way. The pattern calls for one zipper pull. I have, in, I have chosen to do two zipper pulls. That's just preference for myself. Okay, now we want to um, press our exterior and our lining um, zipper panels wrong sides together. Again, I'm going to use a little bit of double-sided tape to help me hold this in place. Uh, you can use clips or finger press as well. And repeat with the lining side. And then once this is done, we are going to baste the three raw edges together, as well as top stitch along the zipper tape. Just trimming up my zipper a little bit here. And you will repeat this exact process with the other side of the zipper tape and the other two zipper panels. Go ahead and do the other side. Okay, so now you're gonna pull out those connectors we did and from the raw edges, you wanna measure up one inch. We're gonna take our zipper panel and you're gonna line that one inch up with the short end like so. So our rectangular rings are nice and centered with our zipper facing inwards. And then you can go ahead and baste these into place. Okay, so now let's do our gussets. You're gonna take your zipper panel and your exterior gusset, put them right sides together. If you've done your seam allowances right, these should match up widthwise perfectly. You're gonna take your lining piece and put it right sides together with the lining side of the zipper panel and add it into the clips. And then we're gonna go across here and sew this with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. I've kept my zipper foot on here so I can get nice and close to that rectangular ring. I like to backstitch a little bit when I come over the connector just to give it a little bit extra security. Okay, and now we want to fold the lining and the exterior gusset pieces wrong sides together and top stitch through that seam that we just made.
Now the other side we're going to do in a similar fashion. It's just going to be a little bit more tricky. So bring our gusset and our zipper panel exteriors right sides together. And then you're going to loop around the lining side and bring it right sides together and add it into the clips. And then go ahead and sew those together with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, and then we want to bring these panels wrong size together. So you kind of got to flip the lining around like so. And I'm going to turn it right sides out so I can top stitch along that seam that we just made. And now you should have this big loop like so. Okay, so now I want to install some rivets um, into those connectors for extra security. So you're going to kind of flip the lining gusset piece out of the way because you do not want to punch a hole through that. I'm going to mark where my hole is and punch the hole for my rivet, ensuring that my lining piece is out of the way. And then install my rivet there. I'm also going to back it with a small piece of Decaville heavy um, scrap just to add a little bit extra security. Okay, and now my rivets are both set. We can go ahead and baste our gusset pieces wrong sides together. Okay, so now we have our exterior pieces and our lining pieces. You can see a class down below how I did my zipper pocket. So we are going to take our lining pieces and our exterior pieces and put them wrong sides together. And go ahead and base those all the way around. Okay, so we are going to find the centers of our gusset piece. You're going to match up those seams where our connectors were and do small snips in the zipper panel for our top center. And you should have your bottom centers already marked from when you installed your purse feet. So we're gonna turn the gusset wrong side out under your zipper and take one of your exterior panels and we are going to match up the bottom centers right sides together. I like to clip my bottom and then my top and then I like to work everything around the curve once I have those areas secured. Okay, so once you have a few clips in the bottom, go ahead and do the same with the center top. And then start working your way down and around the sides. Okay, so once you get to the corners, it's going to look like they don't fit. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your gusset piece and do little, maybe eighth to a quarter of an inch snips to help spread that fabric evenly around that corner. This is helping make a straight piece into a curved piece. So you can see how that spreads the fabric out and then it fits and you can secure those with clips. Okay, so now I am going to take these to my machine and we are going to stitch this together with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. You can see I am doing this on my cylinder arm. This is exactly how I would position the bag on my flatbed as well. I just find it a little bit easier to do this part on my cylinder arm. Um, I don't know. I just do. This is why I bought my cylinder arm was specifically for top stitching of bags and for doing binding on bags. But this is completely doable on a flatbed. It just makes things a little bit easier on a cylinder arm.
as you can see, I use a lot of clips. This is to ensure that my layers will not slip. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of look on the inside, make sure everything was caught and all looks well, and now we are going to do the binding. So I prefer bias tape binding. This is my preferred method of binding a bag. I'm just cutting away a little bit excess bulk here because I know that it slid a little bit. That is okay. We just want to make sure our binding will be able to go around those corners. So I'm going to open up my bias fold binding and fold it in about an inch or so on the short end. And I'm going to match that opened up raw edge of my binding with that seam we just sewn all the way around. Okay, and once you get to the end, you want to bring your binding just past where we started and cut it off. And you want these to overlap. So just bring it around, clip it into place. And then we're going to go ahead and sew around here with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So that's done. So now we want to go back to our start part and we want to be able to fold this down and around that seam. So you want to kind of tuck that piece that we overlapped into the fold of the exterior piece of our binding and then fold it over our curve. So make sure your binding is folded into the center and then having the folded edge come around where we will be stitching it to the bag. So you should have no raw edges showing on the binding and on the uh, actual bag. If you find your binding doesn't quite go around, go ahead and trim some of that bulk away inside the seam allowance that we had sewn, and then it should fit around nicely. Another thing I like to do is make sure I am using the same color thread as my binding. That way, if it looks a little bit messy, nobody's gonna be able to tell. So what I'm going to do is I am going to put my pressure foot, I have my zipper foot on right now, and I have it lined up with the fold of the binding. So about an eighth of an inch away from the fold of the binding, or if you want to go the other direction, it's a three eighths of an inch from the outside edge of the bag. And go around and stitch that binding in place.
So that's all done. So double check everything caught and then you're going to go ahead and do the exact same thing with the other side of the bag. And we're done. All I did was went and I attached my crossbody strap, turned my bag out and look how beautiful she is. All right, that's it. That's all, folks. What did you think of that? It's actually a fairly simple make. Once you get into the binding, you get a little bit of practice. You will love binding. I used to hate binding up until a year and a half ago, and now I just want to bind everything because it just helps put things together so quickly. Anyways, if you like this video, please do give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. And if you'd like to buy me a coffee, that is down below in the description as well. Anyways, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye.